Hi, I'm Gidon from thetechnologyman.com. The EcoFlow River 2 Max has 500 watt AC outlets, super fast 660 watt mains charging, two way 100 watt USB power delivery output and charging input, and a 512 watt hour long lasting LifePo or LFP battery. It has a very useful app to control and monitor it remotely, and it's lightweight, especially considering its LFP battery. It's pretty good value too, comparable to similar units. You can check the current price down below. These power stations are perfect for power cuts, camping, travel and festivals, and around the house and out and about to charge all your tech. And the River 2 Max can charge up to 220 watts off solar panels alone when mains isn't available. I'll run through its capabilities and thoroughly test all its claims to help you decide if this is the right power station for you. So let's take a closer look. In the box, you get the power station itself, a mains charging cable, a car charging cable, a DC5521 cable, and a quick start guide. The River 2 Max has a 512 watt hour lithium iron phosphate or LFP battery, which supports 3000 complete charge cycles compared to the 500 cycles of the River Max's standard lithium iron battery. This is the smallest unit I've reviewed so far that comes with this more desirable battery chemistry. It has a clean design, but doesn't feel quite as premium as other EcoFlow units I've tested. It's made mostly from a hard plastic. There is some movement and flex in some of its component parts. It is lighter than the original River Max though, at 6.2 kilograms, even more impressive considering it now has the LFP battery. And I much prefer its more useful flat top, even if there's a missed opportunity for a wireless charging pad or two. You can see its dimensions on screen, but although a little shorter than the River Max, it's a fair bit deeper even before taking into consideration its rear carry handle. And it no longer has the removable battery of the original River Max. The front of the unit has the now standard EcoFlow LCD screen with just a single color white display, not EcoFlow's typical blue secondary color. Beside the display are three bog standard 2.4 amp USB-A ports. Surprisingly, none of these ports support any fast charging standards like Qualcomm Quick Charge. But there is a single two-way USB-C 100 watt port both to fast charge your tech and also to charge the unit itself. On the other side of the display is a 12 volt 10 amp car charger outlet with a protective rubber flap and two 3 amp DC5521 ports. Below, this UK version has two 500 watt AC outlets that can surge to 1000 watts. These outlets are well spaced and can accommodate even oversized plugs. The US version has four outlets, two three prong grounded and two two prong ungrounded outlets. Press the power button to turn the unit on, which also enables the USB ports. The DC and AC ports have their own power button. Around the back of the unit is the mains charging port and the XT60 DC charging port for connecting to a car outlet or solar panels. There's no flap covering these two ports, which is unusual. But then like every power station I've tested, the River 2 Max doesn't come with any weatherproof rating. So you'll need to take care using it outside anyway. You can charge a unit with the mains cable, from a car outlet with a supplied car charging cable, via solar with optional solar panels, and it supports charging at up to 100 watts using a two-way USB-C port. It's the first EcoFlow unit I've tested with this feature, which can be very useful when there's no mains or solar available. Using the supplied standard 10 amp IEC mains cable, often called a kettle lead in the UK, the unit can charge at up to an impressive 660 watts. I didn't quite see 660 watts, but charging at 600 watts, I charged the unit's 512 watt hour battery from completely flat to 80% charge in just over 40 minutes and a full charge took just under one hour and three minutes. EcoFlow quotes one hour for a full charge, so that's close enough. Charging at full speed, the cooling fans turn on and are fairly noisy. I measured 46 decibels with a sound level meter one meter away. That was around 10 dB louder than background noise in my office. But you can configure the charging speed from the full 660 watts down to 100 watts in 50 watts increments in the accompanying EcoFlow app. It will depend on the ambient temperature, but generally the fans come on less at lower charging speeds. It is probably a little better for the battery charging at lower speeds if you're not in any rush. I did check the River 2 Max's temperatures when fast charging with a FLIR thermal imaging camera and the design of the unit and the fans did a good job of keeping it cool as you can see. The LCD display on the River 2 Max is bright and clear and shows information on remaining charge time when it's charging and remaining run time when it's powering your devices. This estimate is adjusted in real time depending on input or output power. There's also the battery capacity displayed graphically and as a percentage, and icons that illuminate to show which ports are in use. This information is also available in the app, which can monitor the power station even away from home on a cellular connection, if you connect to the device over Wi-Fi. 
There is also an option to connect directly to the power station over Bluetooth when there's no Wi-Fi. Just tap on Use Without Internet and you're asked to select your Wi-Fi network. I've already covered adjusting AC charging speed under Settings in the app and will mention other relevant options as I proceed through the review. I'd recommend making sure the firmware is up to date. There's already been several updates to the firmware just whilst I've been testing the power station. The display is very clear indoors but a little harder to see outdoors in bright sunlight. The unit charges at just under 100 watts with the supplied cable via a 12 volt car outlet. So a full charge will take around 6 hours. You can also charge faster if your car has a 24 volt output, which I confirmed with my bench power supply charging the unit at just under 190 watts. You are limited to 8 amps, as you can see even with the bench power supply set at 10 amps. This is set in the app and can't be increased, only lowered. You need to manually select car recharging in DC mode in the app to get this to work. If you manually select solo recharging in the app, the unit will accept a voltage from 11 volts to 50 volts with a maximum of 13 amps. This can't exceed 220 watts, so the current starts dropping as the voltage exceeds 17 volts. Like all the power stations I've tested, the River 2 Max has a built-in MPPT controller for more efficient solar charging. I tested solar charging with EcoFlow's 220 watt bifacial solar panel, which I discussed in my review of the more powerful EcoFlow Delta 2. It is a good match for the River 2 Max's maximum 220 watt solar input, although it is quite pricey. But you can use pretty much any solar panel with the River 2 Max. It's winter here in the UK, but I did manage to get one day in the last month of testing where the sun came out for enough time to test solar charging. You'll need an MC4 to XT60 cable, which isn't supplied, but it's fairly easy to come by. Midday towards the end of January, I got a maximum of 190 watts off the 220 watt panel, which is pretty good. With a generous 11 to 50 volt input range of the power station, you could connect two panels in series and easily achieve the 220 watts maximum input, even if you had a couple of smaller panels. As I've shown in previous power station reviews, it's very easy to connect panels in series. These 220 watt panels are 21.8 volts. So two in series would be 43.6 volts, which is still comfortably within the maximum 50 volt input of the River 2 Max. Even at 180 to 190 watts, the River 2 Max could be fully charged in a minimum of three hours. Finally, I tested the USB-C charging using the 100 watt output from my EcoFlow Delta 2. You do need to make sure you use a 100 watt rated cable with an e-marker chip, which isn't supplied. I did get the full 100 watts, which will fully charge the power station in around six hours. This UK version has two 500 watt AC outlets that can surge briefly to 1000 watts. I confirmed their sine wave output, which is important for sensitive electronics, with a graphical multimeter. You can use EcoFlow's X-Boost technology to continuously power devices rated at up to 1000 watts by lowering their voltage. So I can run this heater in its low 1000 watt mode, double the true rated output of the River 2 Max. But the voltage drops from around 240 volts UK mains voltage to under 170 volts. And this runs continuously, albeit for less than an hour. But at this lower voltage and output, it's barely generating any heat, so it isn't particularly useful. X-Boost can be useful, but some devices may be sensitive to their voltage requirements and I'd recommend turning this feature off in the app and only enabling it for certain devices, like those with heating elements, when you have no other options. I'd like to see an X-Boost button on the unit itself to easily switch this feature on and off. 500 watts is still plenty to charge portable speakers, drones and laptops, and run TVs, mini fridges, slow cookers, and even some smaller power tools. To test it at its limits, I tried running a few handheld power tools. This Vestal 310 watt sander briefly draws over 800 watts at startup, but still didn't trip the power station. And this slightly more powerful 400 watt Festool Rotex sander hovered comfortably around 500 watts. I could just run this Ryobi 750 watt SDS drill if I ramped it up to full speed slowly. But this Bosch 720 watt angle grinder without any soft start instantly tripped the power station. You should have some idea of what you're plugging into the power station, but if you do exceed its 500 watt limit, overload protection kicks in and you'll need to unplug the device and wait a few seconds before turning the AC subsystem on again. The cooling fans will kick in intermittently at the same noise levels as when charging, depending on what you have plugged in. It's worth remembering to turn off the AC when you're not using it. I measure between a 2-3% drop in capacity per hour just having the AC turned on, with nothing plugged in. You can adjust the AC timeout in the app from 30 minutes to 24 hours, or you can turn off the timeout completely. But unless you're topping the unit up with solar, you may well come back to an empty power station in a day or two. I tested the DC outputs starting the 12 volt car outlet, which has up to 10 amps output at 12.6 volts or 126 watts, which I confirmed with the load tester. Ramping this up to 12 amps set off the current overload protection. 
Using the same load tester, I confirmed the 3 amp maximum output of the 12.6 volt DC5521 ports. You can't set a timeout for the DC outputs in the app, but even if you leave them on, they consume barely any power. These DC outlets are useful for camping accessories amongst other things. All these DC outputs are regulated. There are three standard 5 volt 2.4 amp USB-A ports. It's surprising these ports don't support any fast charging standards, but I confirmed their rated output with a USB load tester. There's a far more useful 100 watt USB-C output. This portable jump starter can charge at the full 100 watts, but more typically it will fast charge most laptops that support charging over USB power delivery, like most MacBooks and its Lenovo Chromebook. There's no power button for the USB ports, it comes on with a unit, which I prefer. And you can set the unit timeout in the app to never to keep the USB ports on even when supplying tiny amounts of power, just like a mains wall charger. The River 2 Max also has a UPS or uninterruptible power supply function. When the power station is charging off mains, any mains devices you plug in will bypass the power station and run directly off mains until there's a power cut, when they'll switch across to the power station's battery. EcoFlow quotes a 30 millisecond switchover, which I found good enough for a desktop computer for example, but they warn against using this feature for data servers that might require 0 millisecond switching. I've used this function before for running a 3D printer. It's reassuring knowing that even a brief power outage won't ruin a long print. All ports support pass-through charging and can be used whilst the unit is charging, and all the ports can be used simultaneously. Finally, I measured the usable capacity of the 512 watt hour built-in battery. Around two 100 watt incandescent bulbs are just under 200 watts until the power station turned off. They run for two hours, 90 minutes, and consume 439 watt hours according to the energy monitoring plug. Power stations like this will always have conversion losses and anything over 80% is pretty good. The EcoFlow works out at 439 watt hours divided by 512 watt hours, which is around 86% and a good result. I did initially run this test at just under 500 watts and got 391 watt hours, or just 76% efficiency. So the inverter does lose some efficiency as you run it closer to its maximum output, probably due to heat loss. I did a similar test using the DC output with a 10 amp electronic load attached. I measured 431 watt hours, which is a respectable 84% efficiency. But the DC output is more efficient running something like a camping fridge, which turns on and off regularly, since there'll be very little parasitic draw from the DC subsystem itself. I've tested several EcoFlow units, and they all offer a good feature set and performance at a fair price. At £550 or $500, the River 2 Max is not cheap. With its LFP battery, super fast charging, and five year guarantee, it should definitely be on your shortlist if you're after a 500 watt power station. Whilst you don't need an app for a power station, remote control and monitoring via the EcoFlow app is surprisingly useful, and also makes firmware updates, which often include new features, very easy. I like the USB C charging option too, and the unit is pretty light considering its long life, usually heavier LFP battery chemistry. The build isn't quite as good as EcoFlow's more expensive units or the first generation River Max for that matter and I would have liked all the USB ports to support fast charging. The River 2 Max also loses the removable battery option the older River Max had, but that did make the River Max quite heavy, even with its standard lithium ion battery, and the internal battery still wasn't replaceable. I will be looking at the EcoFlow power kit soon to add power to my camper van. This system is entirely modular, but a fair bit more expensive. There'll be a link on screen if that video is already out. I'm looking forward to take a look at that system, but it'd be nice to see something modular at this price point with replaceable and upgradable batteries and other power station components like the inverter, for example. I've reviewed power stations from Jackery, Bluetti, and All Powers that all come with similar outputs. I'll link to those videos on screen and down below. Although all those power stations use standard lithium ion batteries with their associated shorter life. I've got lots more power station reviews in the works, so make sure you're subscribed if you don't want to miss them. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What are you looking for in a power station? Does the River 2 Max tick all the boxes or is there another model you'd like me to look at? Let me know down below. As always, if you have any questions, please ask. I read every comment and will do my best to respond. I do hope you found this video useful. Please like the video if you did. I'm releasing videos every week on the latest technology and how to get the most out of it. So please make sure you subscribe. And don't forget to tap the bell icon if you want to get notified as soon as a new video gets uploaded. Thanks for watching.